Hey, my name is Kelsey. I'm a client advisor here at United BMW. Today we have about 10 minutes before the BMW i4 gets picked up, so let's take a look at it. Starting with the basics, the starting MSRP is $65,900. A well-optioned model, so basically one of everything, will be roughly $82,000. So you have quite a lot of range there. Speaking of range, this is rated by the EPA to have between 227 and 270 miles. That's based on the tire and wheel fitment that you choose. It does 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds and has 536 horsepower. It is 189 inches long, 73 inches wide, 57 inches high, and comes in at just over 5,000 pounds at the curb. And all of these models will, of course, be all-wheel drive. In addition to the mineral white fitted on this model, there are 10 other colors available, including Portimao Blue, Frozen Portimao Blue, Tanzanite Blue 2, and San Remo Green. Dravic Gray is also available. As you can see here along our door jams, these are flush fitted door handles, first seen on the 2022 430 and now carried into the i4 and the iX as well. You'll also see additional air intakes along the side right there just to give it better aerodynamics. Here on the front you get a good view of the daytime running lights that are now both surrounds both sides of the car. Of course your standard adaptive LEDs are featured there in the center, those bulbs. Here at the bottom, you'll also see that U-shaped design in the bumper, something we're used to seeing more exclusively on M cars that we're starting to see more and more in the M variation models. This model is fitted with the extended shadow line package. If you opt out of that, your grille surround will be in cerium gray, as well as your mirror caps. At the back on the top lip of the tailgate, you can see the M specific spoiler. We also have additional air vents back here. Your rear diffuser is more shapely, of course, being an all-electric car, there are no exhaust tips. But one thing that surprises most people is that the i4 is actually a hatchback. So that cover there is removable. This one is as well. Here, underneath this cover, you get an extra amp. If you have chosen to fit your car with the Harman Kardon sound system upgrade. So this is not removable, but you do get a little bit of extra space down under here. We'll zoom that out so you can see. And otherwise, as always, you get a hook here and a 12 volt charging port there. And it is an automatic close so you don't have to reach all the way up. And that height is adjustable within the iDrive system as well. All right, sun is setting faster than I expected. So before it gets completely dark, let's look at the inside. There are four Sensatec and six leather options, including the contrast stitching black leather that you see here. That is a Vernasca option. Here on the inside, we see the memory seating, placed into the speaker, something we saw for the first time on the 2022 4 Series. Your buttons are here, your trunk release is there. It's meant to be pretty similar to the 4 Series, so it shouldn't look that different, save for this monster size screen. Now, as we saw for the first time on the iX, the i4 does also have this monster size screen that features iDrive 8. This is just over two feet long and features a 12 inch dash and a 14 inch display screen here. So this is how the screen layout is set up. This is adjustable. If you come over here to the right hand side, click on menu. This is where all of your vehicle apps are now and all of your general apps as well. It's all been condensed into one. So now you don't have that separate app option. You don't have to go through vehicle, my vehicle, etc. to find what you're looking for. It's all in one place. You can filter it by just vehicle apps or all apps. For this purpose, you would go to displays and adjust your center display from there. So you can make all of your adjustments here. From there, you would go to your instrument cluster and make all of your selections from there on the right hand side. With iDrive 8, there are a lot of things that look brand new. The most important thing to remember with BMW iDrive systems that the bulk of it is gonna be the same. It's just gonna look a little bit different. So for example, these are still configurable. You can still adjust these just like you could in iDrive 7 by doing a long press here. 
and making your selections from there, you can move them around just like that, and you can add and delete from there. However, the biggest difference you'll find is that the BMW ID is required for a number of settings. If you haven't yet signed up for a BMW ID, you can come in here, click on that, and add BMW ID. That's going to bring up register now, and it'll bring up a QR code that you can scan and set it up from there. It's pretty easy. But once you have that ready, you can essentially log in to other cars. So if you needed a service appointment or something like that, you could log in and all of your settings would be saved. So your seat settings, your radio preferences, your steering wheel setting, everything that used to be saved previously to your memory seating and then your key is now tied into your BMW ID. If we go to all apps from here, you'll notice Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. These are, of course, still standard. You do need to connect a device for those to be active. Same thing with Spotify. But there are a lot more things that we'll have to cover more in depth at another time. While we have the vehicle, I want to mention charging. So just like before with the i3s, but now with a little bit more, you can adjust the charging mode. So still you can set a schedule if you'd prefer. You can also set departure plans. If you'd like to do it that way, you can select the limit that you want it to receive charge. With electric vehicles, it's uh, important to understand the electric output that your house can handle because if you try to do more than your house is set up to handle, your wiring is set up for, you can potentially start a fire. So you don't want to overdo it. You want to make sure you're familiar with that. You can also adjust your charging target here. So if for whatever reason you don't want it to charge fully, it'll of course give you a warning, but you can set a target there. You can also set it to unlock once it's done charging. This is a brand new feature for BMW and probably one of the most considerate things that they've ever allowed BMW owners to do for others. So when you are on a public charging port, if you can't get back to your car in time, for example, at an airport, restaurant, anything like that, you can actually set it to so that the car will remain locked, but it will unlock the charging cable from the vehicle. So if someone else comes along and they need to charge their car, they can just remove it from yours, causing no damage and no inconvenience to you and charge their own vehicle. Fan loudness is also brand new. So because it's an all electric vehicle, it does require a number of fans to help keep those motors cool. And while it's charging, if you leave it on unrestricted, the fans may be kind of loud. And if you have thinner walls, in your garage or something like that you might find it to be a bit intrusive so you can restrict it or you can set it to automatic so that the car will kind of control the situation however it is worth noting that it will charge the fastest if you leave it on unrestricted so keep that in mind as you can see here you can get wireless charging in the i4 models this is what your key looks like because this is an m50 we get the uh, m badging here one thing one thing that's important to BMW with the electric vehicles is brake energy recuperation. We talk about that a lot with the quote unquote one pedal driving with the i3 and some of that has been carried into the i4 with this B mode. So when you have the car in drive, you can push this over to the left just like you would with sequential driving in a standard transmission car and that brings up what's called braking mode. And what that does is it increases the brake energy recuperation so it can adapt to the road situation. It does better when you have nav going as well, but that essentially enhances it so it's more like the one pedal driving and so more of that energy is going back into your electric motors. You'll notice here that you do in fact still have a sport button. This is what it looks like, a fun play on the M colors. And this is what your dash looks like. If you're familiar with our traditional M cars, uh, especially the M5, you'll notice that this does look similar to the track mode display. These infrared lights that you're seeing here, that doesn't actually show up. That is the driver attention camera as a part of the driver's assistance professional package. So you can also put it into Sport Boost, which will give you a 36 horsepower boost to get you to that full 536 horsepower, just to kind of get you onto the highway. You can also do individual, as we've always seen. You can click on configure, make your selections from there. And same thing with EcoPro, you can do standard or individual and you can make your individual selections here. So you can adjust the climate controls, the seating, these will be dampened down when you have it on EcoPro, especially as that battery starts to deplete. One thing that I've noticed that I really like about iDrive 8 is that the displays 
have been changed to match your driving mode. So you'll see here, this is much more blue. If we put it back into sport, it turns back into that kind of red and purple display. And same here, that color scheme carries throughout. And you'll see it up there too. Little detail, but I appreciate it. While we still have the opportunity to sit in the i4 before it gets picked up here in a second, I just wanted to take a moment to highlight the sustainability practices that BMW has been implementing in both the i4 and the iX, because it's not something that gets talked about often, but especially in automotive production, it is something that's so important and only will continue to be more so. So, for example, BMW has been able to develop and produce the batteries and the rotors for both the i4 and the iX without the use of rare earth metals. So, for example, without the magnets in the rotors, there's no need for those rare earth metals like cobalt, which means that we will never be reliant on the availability of those materials. The battery in the i4 at least is also up to 90% recyclable, so should anything ever happen it can still go on to serve another purpose. BMW has also gotten commitments from the suppliers of the resources that they can't source themselves to not only use re renewable energy while they're sourcing those materials, but to also use ethical business practices so that there are no violations of human rights in the working conditions of those mines and those factories. The aluminum electric motor cases are also manufactured with completely green energy and only locally generated hydroelectric power is used in the production of the i4 at our plant in Munich. And that was a super quick look at the 2022 i4. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you for watching.